and welcome back to the Learn to Code podcast. It's been a long week, a lot of work, and my job has to be done. And thank God I got it through. Um, I've been thinking about buying more books. Uh, the truth is that I might like to actually finish the ones I already bought. So I'm reading currently uh, a book about uh, designing databases. And I just realized that most of my books um, are actually about databases and SQL. So I guess that I didn't think too much about it until I opened the Kindle uh, app for Windows. And I just uh, kind of glanced over all of the books. So it was pre it was uh, I just realized that I've been focusing a lot on databases. Uh, I guess that's because mainly I do work with databases all the time. So I guess uh, I figure. So uh, I've been working years on databases anyway. But the truth is that it's rarely the occasion. Or may I say, um, I do have... Um, I don't have a lot of chances to actually create a database from the ground up. Unless I am starting on a new project for the company that is. So as the years come by, uh, those chances are very um, long and far between. So what I decided to do was to, I guess I'm going to be focusing right now on learning how to design uh, databases at the moment. Because I want to create a database for... Uh, to solve classic problems like um, accounting, for example. And obviously people, cataloging people is really important, no matter what um, what application are you designing. So especially in my field, uh, cataloging people is very useful. Um, in any case, um, you may not, if you are working with databases, you may be working with uh, already built databases. So uh, I wonder if you built a database from scratch even once. And let me tell you, that's quite an experience because you are being exposed to um, a large array of problems and and things that you need to that you need to fix actually. So the first uh, tool that I learned. Way back in the day when I began uh, uh, working as a software developer for uh, for um, for the town hall uh, on my city, um, I was trusted to build. Uh, my first project was actually um, a database system for a library, so you can basically catalog a lot of books from for the local library. Um that was pretty fun. It 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 wasn't really challenging because uh, when I was um back on the on the school I did play a lot with um with library databases. So it, it w even though it wasn't really a challenge for me at the moment, uh, it made me realize how difficult could it be to just design something from from zero. Because uh, when there is nothing on the screen or a piece of paper, it's really hard to just uh, begin, you know. But then again, uh, one of the strategies I did back in the day was to just focus on something. And in my case, um, that something uh, wasn't the entire uh, project at the moment. It was just basically, you know what, I need to focus on how to build a database, how to create the the database schema, how to create the empty tables, how to insert data in those tables. And naturally I began to 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 join the dots, let's say. It. And I basically realized why do I really need to implement relationships between tables? Um, those relationships allow me to have a catalog of uh, of authors, a catalog of books, and create relationships between them. Not directly, because in that case, if I do recall, um, 
I learned how to use properly uh, a many-to-many -many relationship. So basically, you want to, in, in the database world, if you want to um, create a relationship between two tables, you can do so in in two ways. One is uh, from one member from one table to one or many of the second table, and vice versa. And the second way is to, if you really need to create a relationship between a list of books and a list of authors, and you obviously know that one author may write one or several books, uh, yet you must remember also that if you have one book, that single book may uh, may have been written by one, two, or three authors or more. So that's one basic example of how to use a many-to-many -many relationship. So you basically create a, a third table, which only purpose on life is to create a relationship between those two. So the many-to-many -many relationship was a really great tool on my tool set er, uh, very early on. So when I finished the uh, when I finished the project in around three months, um, yeah, I finished the project in three months. I did release it, and I only had like uh, one user basically. That was a, a, an old lady that was uh, in charge of the library. So she basically hand me over um, a f uh, an Excel file. Um, back in the day, I believe it was Excel 2003. So I managed to export that into a comma separated value file. And I was able to insert those, um, those that data in, inside my database. So, and I began to, um, I, uh, I just imported the entire thing inside, uh, on a temporal table. And I used that table to, uh, cr basically create, uh, insert into statements with sort queries. So I was basically data mining the entire thing. So I created that. Um, the application was built for Windows 32 bit. Uh, I believe it was Windows XP back in the day. Uh, you know, government. And yeah, uh, I built that tool using something called Delphi or Delphi. Um, I believe it was uh, Delphi 2007. Uh, back in the day, um, my boss at the time, uh, he ordered us to actually build all of all of our software using that. We didn't get... Um, licenses so i i if i do remember we actually pirate them uh, from the from the internet i guess so yeah that's it so never mind that um we got installed our ides we were working with something called objective pascal for a long time and i had to say that at the beginning i didn't really understand i I didn't really understood how uh, Objective Pascal was actually supposed to be working. I basically just use it like a functional programming language when in reality it was an objective oriented uh, programming language. But I didn't use classes as they were intended to be. So I just basically created a new project and I just uh, watched how the IDE created this uh, an empty slate for uh, for a Windows form, and I began my uh, user interface designing by adding buttons, menus, etc. So it was pretty uh, it was pretty rough, I, I should I say. Um, um, basically, most of the buttons con contain most of the code. So I basically just double click on a on a button uh, inside the IDE and inside the form and r I was uh, jump into the code uh, into the code mode and right there and then I basically created a small programs inside those but inside those graphic user f uh, user interface buttons and I put all my logic there so back in the day 
I didn't have a teacher. Um, I did have colleagues with more experience than me. Uh, the problem is in software development is that you may have 30 years of experience. Yet, if you have only worked with something like um, the IBM OS uh, 4, 400 operated system or database, I believe it was, uh, those 30 years of, of experience are only with that software. So you may have become as old and important in the organization as that software. Uh, yet the truth is that if you don't develop any other new skill or, or if you just stay there, uh, you just becoming not solid. The moment the, the, the organization brings in a new system that brings way too much value to ignore, uh, the old system is going, is going to be, it's going to be coming out. So that's a reality. Probably in government, you can skip that because obviously government, uh, but the, th the truth is that in pri in the private sector is really weird. Um, it happens, I know, but it's really strange to see a system that has been working for 40 years, for example, and the actual server for that machine cannot be replaced. And, and I don't mean in the sense that you cannot just buy a new machine and just replace it. No, uh, basically, if you replace that system in, in for, for example, the IBM um, OS 4, 400, if you replace that machine, um, you are basically saying goodbye to a le to a legacy code base so old that um, you basically need to rewrite the entire thing for the for a new system to take over. So the second problem we have with those kinds of legacy systems is that obviously the 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 machines are no longer being built, so they went out of. Uh, they were discontinued like 20 years, 25 years ago. So there is no chance in hell that you are getting new machines to replace the old ones. But never mind that. A database is a database. Even now that back in the 1970s. So uh, any sensible database administrator may actually get um, a copy of the database or at least the the insert statements to recreate it as long with the uh, structure of the database and um, basically just uh, restore the data inside a new database engine and you may begin your work as a data miner there and design a new model maybe for the database because most probably the old model is, is not going to work for you uh, but the truth is that uh, in, in the end, at the end of the day, uh, what I'm trying to say here is that all my career from 11 years from today, I've been working with database applications. I've been very focused on that. Uh, I've been very known for that also. So when I came out from, from one job, it's, it is way easier for me to to begin working on a new job doing uh, database administration work rather than move on to desktop development or mobile development. Uh, yet I decided that this year that should just, uh, I'm not going to be doing that anymore. I mean, in the sense that I'm going to be focusing even more on databases, yet I'm going to develop the 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 um, the end user software let's call it like that so yeah i want to build not just the back end but the front end and i haven't decided yet what i'm going to use what platform i'm going to be using uh but the first candidate for that um is going to be i guess mobile most people are working with with smartphones actually even more often than the computer um, so and I've been uh, hearing a lot that mobile first is a thing so why not so I'm planning to learn Java deeply I guess uh, I do wonder 
if I going to need Kotlin now. I guess that if I haven't begun my career as, as a Android developer, I may actually give the Kotlin a shot first. Uh, I am, um, I am used to working with Java, yet in a very low level, uh, development level, I guess. I'm not an, an expert in any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So I really need to get my, uh, I really need to get working on that. So, uh, even though Java has been working great for me at the moment, I wonder if um, if I going to be using Java at all once I get into Android development. But never mind that. Um, I guess I will find out tomorrow. Uh, I just got this design database book. Uh, I don't remember the name, and I don't have the Kindle at, uh, at hand. But never mind that. Um, I'm going to read that book tomorrow afternoon. Um, I did realize that reading is way faster than just listening or watching a video. So I can, I can basically finish a single book in a couple of days, um, of just reading like, uh, well, basically in like two to three hours, you can actually finish a three to four hundred pages book. Um, especially if you already know um the subject in my case is databases so i'm pretty familiar with it so i'm going to be reading that and see if i'm going to keep focusing myself into database design uh, i guess i will since i'm planning to create a database for a new project and create the front end for that project so well uh, i'm going to be talking to you tomorrow then so good night